Have you noticed people are blowing up on YouTube and gaining subscribers faster than ever? There's a real reason why that's happening, and we're gonna talk about how you can take advantage of that in this episode of the Creator Secrets Podcast. Let's go. All right, so today we're talking about subscribers and why it's easier to get subscribers now than ever before. If you were to compare the amount of subscribers and the growth at which people gain subscribers on their channels now in 2024 versus maybe 2014, it's a hundred X easier. And so, I mean, just spoil the whole thing. <laughs> the, the reason why it's like that is because of TikTok and of course shorts. Let me explain. See, I'm sure everybody can relate to either feeling like an influencer now because they've grown on TikTok or one of these short form uh, platforms. Um, or two, they know somebody that is an influencer. We're talking not just like 10,000 followers, but maybe a million followers. It's becoming so commonplace. And it really started with TikTok, with short form content. People were not only were able to create content quickly, but gain large followings because in a 20 minute viewing session, you might only be able to watch four or five videos. So maybe you're subscribing to one or two channels during that time, if you're even subscribing versus in that same 20 minutes. I mean, like, let's just say each one of those shorts or TikToks for 60 seconds, that's 20 minutes of content. So that's that many more opportunities to follow on TikTok or subscribe through YouTube shorts to a creator. That's why people are gaining more subscribers in TikTok, uh, example, more followers. Obviously, if you're listening to this podcast, we're focused on YouTube, but we don't um, avoid the discussion of all the platforms. And in this case, shout out to TikTok for creating this new format and creating the opportunity to gain followers there, but on YouTube with YouTube Shorts to gain subscribers faster than ever. And so that's what we're going to be talking about today. Also like talking about is subscribes important and how to gain subscribers. Um, this whole discussion though came because of Austin experience. Uh, mm -hmm. Take us back a little bit to what you use YouTube shorts for and why it's significant for this conversation. Yeah. So I started my channel not too long ago and I've been making content around tech, right? They're sort of broader, longer videos about tech, uh, more in the vlog style. Lots of me talking to the camera, right? A lot of my comments ended up being these long essays, really engaged people with my content. And I felt that if they were spending that time in my comment section to leave me really great thoughts about the video, they deserved a reply back. Now, the normal way to, to do this would be to go you know, to uh, YouTube Studio, go in, type out my reply. But there were a few that I thought were just so profound that they actually not only would inspire future videos, but that I could actually reply with a short. I, I don't know that they do it in the YouTube Studio app, but I know that in the actual main YouTube app, they have a button in there that lets you and encourages you to use the shorts little content creator, the little recording and editing thing to actually do that reply. And I thought, why not? It takes me no time. I just use it as a reply and they will get some value out of it as well as me. So I started doing that and actually it was, it was weird. The day after I posted my first one, I saw a huge spike in views and a huge spike in engagement and I've been doing it not all the time since, but many times since then. And I guess the, the big thing for me is that number one, I, there was that initial spike, but actually more importantly in my eyes, the co original commenter always is appreciative of the fact that I did and they always get a reply and I almost always have a conversation with them past it. So that's the strategy that I've been using. And you totally missed the big takeaway though is you've gained a lot of subscribers oh, yeah, from exactly. doing shorts. Yes. And I even asked you well, what, what's been like the, um, the best way to gain subscribers. And you said for you is like doing shorts. Definitely. Hence why we're even talking about it. Yeah. I mean, one of the big things for me is that you're right. Essentially more exposure to people who are your fans who might be interested in your content. You know, the main YouTube algorithm doing long form videos is a great way to do that. But like you said, the reality is the more chances, the more at bats that you have with an individual person, the more likely they are to subscribe. And let's dive a little bit deeper into why short form in general, right? is gaining you more subscribers. Yeah. It's not just the fact that, number one, people watch more YouTube shorts in the same amount of yeah. time than a proper long-form piece of content or like a podcast, right? It fills up that whole 20 minutes. 
But just think about the content and user interface itself. Yeah. When you watch a YouTube video and you expand it to the whole screen, there's no subscribe button on the screen. There is the little uh, bar to like go from the beginning or whatever timestamp. You might have a fast forward to the next video. Uh, and you got the little uh, gear for the settings if you want to watch it and 2x speed. But there is no subscriber button on the actual video itself. Now, let's look at TikTok, okay? Because I think more people can relate to that. But same thing with YouTube Shorts. Correct me if I'm wrong. The subscribe button is in the video itself, right? Oh, it totally is. It's very prominent. So already, YouTube Shorts has a leg up compared to proper long form within the video itself. Now, of course, if you're watching the video in the YouTube viewing page, the subscribe button is right there. Yeah. But because it's not in the video itself, you're not even thinking about subscribe. You have to kind of go out of your way. And we always say, hey, people know to subscribe to a channel, but how many times does a video have to show up or you ask for it to happen? On TikTok and YouTube Shorts, it's just happening so much faster because that's there. That's just the second reason, right? The third thing too is because you have more chances to put out shorts you have more at bats like you said so you have more opportunities to not only ask for the subscriber i know that with uh, short form content creators they say you shouldn't really even ask for it right Mm. because it's so front and center but say you you did figure out a way to get get that get the ask out there right to do the call to action more likely to get them to subscribe because again it's so easy you don't leave you don't leave like you can subscribe or in TikTok, you can follow and then swipe to the next piece (laughs) of content. So those are three ways that I think people aren't realizing that is so significant. Why I realize it is because I go back to the old days of YouTube (laughs) where you're talking, there was no competitors, number one, and two, there was no short form. So it's all had to do there. And you know, the call to action was very powerful. Hey, you guys subscribe for whatever. Some people make it like a sob story. Hey, I'm trying to get to my first thousand. And then they get people that are sympathy subscribing, right? <laughs> and then, uh, of course, if you have a good strategy where you're adding value and say, hey, you guys, you know, I really want to build a community. If you want to subscribe for more videos on this content, if you benefit from this type of you know, information, subscribe, right? Whatever. But in shorts, it's literally 20x, I think like 100x. So this is why we're talking about uh, it's easier to get subscribers. Now, the real question is, and I don't know if you want to add anything in addition to that. The real question is, because it's so much easier to gain followers on TikTok, because people are getting to the silver and gold play buttons faster, <laughs> do subscribers matter? Hey, this podcast is supported by subscribers just like you. If you want to further support what I'm doing on this platform, just click the link below to check out my free workshop at vloggingacademy.com. It would mean so much to me and help me to put out more podcast episodes just like this for you creators out there. Click that link below. Because it's so much easier to gain followers on TikTok, because people are getting to the silver and gold play buttons faster, <laughs> do subscribers matter? And the short answer is 100% yes, it does. Mm. But any thoughts before I go into some of my reasons why I think you should not only ask for subscribers, they still matter, even if a lot of other people have huge followings and they're getting it fast, maybe for like, artificial reasons or superficial reasons. Definitely. I mean, uh, this will play exactly into what you want to talk about next. So this is great. Uh, first of all, I want to just strike the point that yes, convenience is key. That's why people get more followers on TikTok quicker. And that's why there was so much attention on the platform when it was gaining steam. It was like the numbers were just crazy for creators, for the platform. Every, like we look at like there's Instagram reels now, there's Facebook reels, you've got uh, uh, YouTube short. I mean, everybody wanted to compete, right? Even even Snapchat was trying to compete. I make a joke that the guitar tab app, that like the, I play guitar, they had a TikTok competitor. I'm like, everybody wanted in on the action because it was a good format for those numbers, right? Uh, so convenience is key, definitely. But I will say that there is a difference as a creator between doing it on YouTube and doing it on TikTok. See, if you, if you think of YouTube as the game, which you and I really think that it is, it's, it's the show, really, right? It has an unfair advantage in the, in the value that a short can have for a creator. I know there's a lot of debate over whether it's useful or whether you should create them, but a subscriber from a short is equivalent to a subscriber from your long content, right? And when you get, when you subscribe to a channel, 
it is a signal to YouTube that you like this person. You like their take on things. You like their form of creating. And so if they subscribe to you on the short, well, guess what? Next time they're on their homepage, it's much more likely that they'll see your long form content on your homepage. That's crazy. That's never, that's, that type of thing has never happened in the history of YouTube, really. And so whether they still matter or not, I think that that is why they still, that's one reason why they still matter is because it's a on-ramp into developing that relationship with a viewer and giving them more chances to watch all of your content, not just your shorts. For sure. Um, I'm smiling because as I'm, we're talking about this, right? Shorts being a great way to gain subscribers fast because of what we've seen on TikTok. Uh, I'm thinking about the people going to argue, well, is shorts good for your channel? Should you do it? <laughs> Jevin Dovey, right? Good friend of mine, video production, uh, YouTube expert. And he's kind of like saying, no, shorts are bad. And he's got a lot of evidence for it. But then, you know, there's other people on the other side, like Daniel Batal. He says, hey, shorts actually are great for the channel. It just depends how you use it. Mm -hmm. We're going to talk about this. The argument isn't like, should you do shorts or not? We're just seeing that because shorts, you can do them so quickly, and if you do it in a certain way, they can get you a lot more chances to get subscribers yeah. and can benefit, like you said, your long-form content. So with all that being said, I guess if you're listening to this, you want subscribers, so who cares <laughs> about the next part? But I think it's important to understand why subscribers do still matter and how you use it. See, the one thing I'm gonna say and disclose is, how many subscribers you have doesn't tell you how many views you're going to get. Yeah. We know this because there's channels with a million subscribers that can barely get 10, 20,000 views. There's channels like yours that have not that many subscribers and oftentimes you get more views in that. Mm -hmm. How you get views is based off of the video itself and the strategy around that. But why subscribers matter, okay? I'm just going to go down the list really quickly. Go for it. Number one, why subscribers matter? Because perception leads to decision making. Mm. If there's two videos that show up on a search and they're about the same, and maybe the videos itself have the same value, but one comes from a channel that's got 100,000 subscribers versus a new channel that's only got 100 subscribers, social proof would help you decide. I yes. know this as a fact because I do this. I'm like, <laughs> yeah. okay, if this person got a million subscribers, I don't even think, is it short form subscribers? Were they old subscribers? Have they been doing this since 2010? Is 100 uh, subscribers on the Doug's channel just in the last week? You don't know any about that. So you just have to make the quickest decision. You're like, yeah, I'm going to go with, if I only had limited amount of time, social proof still matters. Mm -hmm. So perception is important. This is why having subscribe, especially in this day and age where people do have bigger followings and they're getting it faster, man, you kind of have to kind of keep up. Yeah. I'm not saying this is a whole strategy. I'm just saying this is one example. Perception is important, right? Secondly, how it plays to your authority, meaning mm. say people are going to go look into your channel or, I mean, we talked about the view, the video uh, picking decision making, yeah. but just in general, that number still speaks to like there's a community that wants and cares about this content. Also, to the algorithm. So, the algorithm and the algorithm is way more savvy than any of us. I'll <laughs> tell you that. So, they know that if someone has five million subscribers, but they're never watching the videos, they're like, hey, they're not going to serve it out. But it is still a a uh, signal. You probably could speak to this way more. It's still a signal that the person cares enough yes. to subscribe, whether it's on a short or a long form, they're subscribing. So guess what? You get a little bit more points. You get a little more authority. So that's what I mean. The third reason too is uh, the opportunities you can get. I do believe brands, agencies, Anybody in the creator economy understands that subscribers don't always equal views, but subscribers is still something that's on their radar. They're like, how many subscribers do you have, mm -hmm. right? Because the same thing for the decision making of the viewer or the authority you're building, not only in the in that uh, on that platform, but for the algorithm, it's it's same for them. Mm -hmm. Especially if those people don't know any better. So somebody that's got a million subscribers versus somebody that got like less than a hundred. There's something about that that inherently tells that person that's representing the brand, like, hey, this person's built an audience. We want them. They understand content, right? Because people are subscribing. So that's why you don't want to discount it. And I say all this because 
for a while, and I'm one of those people that did it, it's like subscribers don't matter, <laughs> right? Because what do we care about? If you're a real creator and you care about the real deal, it's about the views. But don't skimp out on the subscribers because what sucks is say you do get a lot of views you're not doing the call to actions, you're not utilizing shirts, you're not getting subscribers, there might be opportunities you miss out on because you're not growing that number. Though superficial can matter in certain uh, decision making or in certain circles or just in certain discussions. Anything you want to add to that or thoughts when I say that and why it's important to still you know, have gaining subscribers as part of your strategy? Yeah, you give a few different kind of broad ideas, right? Perception and influence, business opportunities, community engagement, all of those things are aspects of this discussion, right? And I think that that is the way to look at subscribers. If you're looking at just the number, right, the number is a either a key that unlocks doors or it's a tiebreaker among other decision makers. It is a indicator of your channel's health, but it's not the holy grail. The content is the holy grail, as you and I always talk about, right? That said, I think that it's also interesting that you talk about the, the algorithm. I really do believe, and uh, you could maybe confirm or deny this for me, is that when you subscribe to someone, it's sending that signal to YouTube, as you said, that guess what? I am interested in this. And it's more likely, it's just one more, I don't know, coin on the scale, right? That tips it in the direction of saying, maybe I will show this person this content because guess what? They've seen it in the past. And YouTube wants to give the viewer a hit, right? And if they've seen something from you in the past, well, then you start to build trust. But this goes back to why the uh, content is king in this scenario. Say you make a video that's not great and they subscribe to your short and they do they show you the, the video that's not that great next time. And they watch it and they're like, eh, I don't know. Maybe they unsubscribe, maybe they don't. Even if they don't, you think that the YouTube is going to continue showing them those videos? Definitely not. Because YouTube's main game is to show them the things that they want to see, right? So it goes back to that original principle, which is make sure that the content is your focus, but subscribers can be an indicator of health for the channel over the long term. There you go. And so obviously I want to talk about uh, what are what are the things that as a creator we can learn from some of the things we're observing or some of the things that you know we've learned or that have worked for a lot of subscribers. More and more, and I'm going to be one of these people that implements this strategy on this channel, right? By the way, subscribe to Creator Secrets. <laughs> and <if> comment. <laughs> yeah. If you're a creator that cares about YouTube, wants to learn more about YouTube, and wants to understand and take advantage of all the opportunities in the creator con on economy, subscribe. But I'm going to be doing shorts where I uh, utilize the reply function. By the way, side story, we've talked about this before. The reply using a short is a like throwback to the old school video replies you used to be able to do in the comments, which they totally got rid of. Both creators and viewers didn't like it. And I think that is it's an important way to engage and show up. Actually, this this example proves two points. Mm. Think about when you get a DM from someone with a lot of influence, especially if someone you follow. If you get a DM that's a video, it's like mind blowing. It's like, whoa. Like I know that when I do that for some of my viewers or my wife, she's done it for her vlog followers. Some people literally will say like, I got emotional or yeah. I can't believe it. You made my day. Seriously. And it's it's happened. I mean, we've been doing this since 2008 and sometimes we'll just spend 20 minutes like replying back to people with video replies. And it it's so... And it's so meaningful to those people. So if you're doing it regularly in the comments, it's a big deal already. But imagine if you do it to somebody that doesn't know you and you have influence. Yeah. So, you know, one of the ways I get onto people's radar, and I'll just tell you, that has nothing to do with YouTube. The way I get onto people's radar is I go to my Instagram, which I've got. I always forget how much I do. Can you see how many followers I got? <laughs> yeah, on let me pull it up. Instagram. Uh, by the way, if you want to follow me on Instagram, <laughs> Benjamin TV, I could probably find it faster. Let me see. Uh, I don't even know how many f subscribers I've got. Um, here we go. Followers. Okay. I have 411,000 followers on Instagram. This is not a flex. I'm just using this example. If I message either a, a complete stranger or especially another creator and they see I have 400,000, See, that's the social proof I'm talking about. Yeah. That is the authority builder. Now, any creator that's like legit knows like that means nothing, right? It means nothing. But guess what? 
you had to get it somehow. Yes. So you might get on someone's radar and it might gain someone's attention. So this is why this short reply function is so genius because not only is it easy way to engage, but if you do it the right way, and I want you to speak to this because it can be done the wrong way, if it's a value piece of content that becomes its own short that goes into the sea or the ocean of YouTube and drives traffic back, and not only can you potentially get a subscriber from that, but it drives back to your long-form content, mm -hmm. and they're more likely to subscribe after they've seen enough valuable videos, whatever that value is to them. It, it's just a smart strategy to uh, take advantage of. And the one thing I would say in terms of doing a short, but especially if you're using the shorts reply function, just keep it simple while at the same time still making it valuable enough for someone that stumbles on it in the shorts window um, as it relates to your content and the value proposition of your channel. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I'm just going to speak from my experience, right? Um, I think the important thing that you bring up, the kind of core principle is that the, the short form content is not the show, right? We talked about those with TikTok. The show is the long form content. Just frankly, it is more valuable to everyone to have that long form content, more valuable to you, more valuable to the viewer, more valuable to YouTube. So it is always gonna be the show. It's why TikTok doesn't have the same power ultimately that YouTube does. And that's why Shorts is an interesting piece of YouTube because it's taking the format and putting it on a platform that has that value, right? It's it really, I think it's very fascinating. I think it's pretty profound that that simple change, right? So talk about the, the format, right? In my videos, it comes down to that reply, right? I always want my short form videos to point back to a piece of my content to say, this is interesting. You might, it's kind of like a trailer for a movie, really, right? You might find this interesting. Maybe you'll subscribe to me. And then the next time you see, or maybe even in that little like chip or link that you can add in, it says, that's actually the thing that you want to watch if you like this. And your goal is to eventually get them interested in you as a personality, interested in the topics you're talking about, interested in your takes, and then ultimately interested in the, your long take, which is, which is going to be your long form video, right? But when I think about the format, right, I've always kind of thought as a TikTok as like uh, Twitter for short video, right? Twitter for video, right? And the thing that people loved about Twitter, I mean, it was a smaller group of people that were into Twitter. But the thing that people went on that platform for was conversation. And that's ultimately why I ended up making those short form replies is because guess what? It's the perfect format for conversation. And like I said, almost every time I have somebody come through and they say, I love that you replied to this and they have their own take again. And then guess what? You have another video that you can make right after that. So it's just this self-perpetuating cycle. It's a perfect format for that. Yeah. And so Jevin, you don't know him, but uh, just just because I think about him when I'm talking about all this, <laughs> because he's like, hey, you guys shouldn't do shorts. I actually agree. And it relates to something you and I have discussed. If the shorts you're creating or literally stand alone mm. for an audience that only wants shorts, then yeah, making a second channel makes sense. But if the shorts is an extension of your long form content, not like a clipping it out and using it, but literally it's like an extension of the discussion or it's an extension of the conversation in the comments related to that long form. It totally makes sense because you, like you said, it's driving back, right? You're pointing back to it. It's like, so like literally this, by the way, I'm going to coach you guys on how to do this. <laughs> yeah. I'm going to do this today. I'm going to find a comment that um, keeping the conversation going on the topic I talked about in my podcast. And if it's valuable to everybody that's watching it, I'm going to do a short on it say, hey, and I'm going to answer it. I'm going to pick that. I'm going to do a reply to it. And I, I know that the answer I give is going to give value. But in that, I say, hey, you guys, if you want to watch the full podcast, click that link down below. Because if, if there's value in me answering that question in that shorts, there's probably still additional value they could get from the long form yeah. versus the danger of shorts. I think creators generally know that a lot of people are experiencing it is when it cannibalizes your long form content mm -hmm. and actually hurts the channel. So I, no one knows for sure, even Jevin, I know you're like, hey, I know I've done all the <laughs> research, right? Um, there's plenty of other people winning with shorts as a strategy on their channel. So for me, I, I do believe that it's worth trying. 
Yes. Why not? You know, because ultimately, if your video is good, doing a short or two ain't going to hurt your channel because it's the long term that makes sense. The reason people don't watch videos is because your videos suck. <laughs> FYI, I'm serious. Like the reason it's not getting views or listen. By the way, the amount of views you have to put into context for your audience, for your content. So I'm not poo pooing on anybody for a certain amount of views. But you as a creator, if you're like, wow, like it's because I'm doing shorts, people aren't watching. That's just not how YouTube works. YouTube doesn't want to create stuff that's going to hurt you. Now, they make mistakes sometimes, but guess what? They're always adjusting. So again, speaking to the people that think uh, shorts is bad to put on that channel, yeah, if you do it a certain way. But in this way, thinking about those days where we had comment replies yeah. and how powerful that is and how that kept the uh, discussion, the conversation, the engagement going and ultimately just adding more to that video. I think this is a great strategy um, if used as an extension. And so then the last thing I'll say about the, the ultimate takeaway, this is one of the interesting things about subscribers is you still have to ask for it. Mm -hmm. Even though I think most people that use YouTube understand there's a subscriber button on the view page or there's a plus, is it a plus sign on YouTube shorts? What I think is it's it? a subscribe button. A subscribe yeah. button. Yeah, I think it is. Right? Um, on the YouTube shorts, it's the only thing that doesn't happen passively. Meaning, you even said like views happen passively because of auto function, right? Yeah. You going to YouTube isn't passive, but like everyone does it every single day. Actually hitting the subscribe button, you still want to have that call to action. Just make it simple. And the way you do it right, by the way, this is the way a beginner or a seasoned creator should be doing it. Add value first. Mm -hmm. Make it so that they want to subscribe already on their own, but you're reminding them, hey, I have more content. And that's the second thing you do when you ask for it. Don't just say, hey, subscribe to the channel. Literally tell them why it would be smart for them to. I'm going to use my call to action. Subscribe to Creator Secrets and my channel, Benji Travis. If you're a creator that wants to learn more about YouTube or gain more opportunities in the creator economy, that's why you should subscribe. Guess what? The right people are going to subscribe. I'm going to get the right subscribers mm -hmm. versus just saying like a blanket, hey, subscribe <laughs> to my channel and then you move on to it. Because then it just becomes like, like almost like white noise. Yes. It's like you're so used to hearing it versus like, you know what? I am a creator or like I, I want to be a creator. I think, yeah, whatever. You could do this whatever niche. Uh, the mistake is not asking. Second mistake is asking just for the subscriber um, and not giving context why they want to want to subscribe. And any thoughts there? Yeah, I mean, definitely. Because you don't ask for subscribers, and I've been telling you to ask for subscribers. Yeah, I, I rarely ask for subscribers because of that main reason. And I, I definitely will at some point or another, right? I think that one of the big things for me is, is that... Uh, I, I have trust that the people who are going to be interested are going to subscribe. Now, you're right. Ultimately, it's kind of you're making a brand promise when you ask for a subscriber, right? You're saying, look, I've given you this value. You've gotten to the end. You liked it so much that you watched the entire short. You watched the entire video. You've, you've stuck with me, right? And now you're going to say, guess what? This is what this is all about. We talk a lot about the uh, project for a YouTuber not being the video. It's the channel right? You're saying, guess what? <laughs> We're a part of this project right now. We're actively creating this thing. I want to give you the value that you, you, that you just received again. And you're just reminding them, guess what? If you want to continue receiving that value, give YouTube that signal <laughs> and maybe I'll pop up on your homepage or uh, hit the bell, right? And I'll, you'll get the notifications if you liked it that much, right? So I can't necessarily say why I haven't yet. I think a lot of it for me at the beginning is that I'm taking a slow roll approach for the most part. It's not my focus to get subscribers right away. It's more focus of just getting the content up because again, content is king in this scenario, right? But eventually, when I get to the point of being strategic about looking for growth, I'll definitely do it. I understand the importance of a call to action, but one of the things for me is that that is a spend in a way. It's not something you can do at the beginning of a video because you haven't given value. You have Especially to on a short. <laughs> yes, you only have 60 seconds, right? So like it's valuable. And yeah, I'd say on the, on the long form side, not only add value, but still like be a uh, discerning yes. of when you do it, right? Do exactly. it at the right time. You don't have to do it every video. And on the short side, definitely you shouldn't do it on every <laughs> video. And if you do do it, you got to do it quick. Yes. And it's got to be almost like uh, comical or entertaining. 
um, and done strategically because again with shorts, especially the way you know they just play uh, again and again and again. So yeah, I totally understand what you're saying. Otherwise, it does become white noise. And actually, guess what? I asked for subscribers once actually in all of my things, and immediately when I did it, I saw a pop of subscribers. So as soon as you wait Neutral, for it, bring it back to me. <laughs> bring it back to me. <laughs> Gotta ask for the subscribers. So fun. By the way, but to his point though, the one thing I will say to give you credit. Yeah. You really want to make sure they were getting value from your exactly. videos. You want to make sure that they were going to continue gaining value. Yes. And so when you did ask for the subscribers, anybody that had been following you and becoming a fan, they're like, yep. shoot, I can't believe I didn't subscribe. It's more meaningful. And so, yeah. And so <clears throat> ultimately, don't ask for it too much. Anything else that you want to add? No, that's all I was going to say is just be judicious with it. At that being said, it doesn't hurt to ask, right? There's very low cost to you to you asking, right? If you're asking too much, you'll know, right? Because it's not working anymore, right? My approach is to be judicious, very judicious with it, right? I've only done it once across, you know, 30 videos or so, right? But if it's not working, if that's not working for me, well, then I'll go a different route, right? So just don't be afraid to ask for it, but also, you know, make sure that you're de delivering that value. And that again, I'll just say it again, it all comes back to the content in the end. Start with the content first. Hey, what's up, guys? If you're listening to this or watching it on YouTube, it's because you care about subscribers and ultimately you care about your YouTube channel, becoming a creator. So if you're into that and you want to learn more about YouTube, I've got a course called Vlogging Academy where you're not only going to learn about vlogging, you're going to ultimately learn how to create content, how YouTube works so you can get views that leads you to gaining more subscribers. So if you want to check out the free workshop, click down below the link link and you can go there and watch a free workshop right now and learn how to get views as a vlogger on YouTube for free right now. 100%. And so just to like summarize everything, uh, the reason subscribers are gaining so fast is the short form content. Mm -hmm. We saw this in TikTok, pe people getting a million plus followers way faster than ever. And then YouTube shorts really replicating that on this platform. The totally. amount of silver and gold play buttons, it's because of that. So definitely utilize it. Secondly, subscribers are still important, right? Decision making, people are going to look at your subscribers. It gives you authority um, in the space and with the algorithm. And then third, potential opportunities like that is still a metric that matters. It's not what's going to get you views, but still like it, it's showing these people that have to make a quick decision. Maybe they're looking at 100 creators. So um, utilize the short reply function. It's an extension of the long form content. It keeps the discussion going. And then, of course, be discerning and strategic. But you got to ask people to subscribe. But at the end of the day, gaining subscribers isn't the most important thing. <laughs> it's gaining the views. And the way you gain views is to have better videos. So subscribe to this channel if you want to learn more about that because we're going to have more of those discussions. Um, and then leave a comment because I want to do some YouTube short replies yes. to create some shorts for this channel. Get the conversation going. There you go. And so um, I will see you guys on the next podcast.